Hi, my name's Phil and I like discussing politics and the winner of the poll from yesterday was the link between Brexit and tax avoidance. So this shouldn't actually take that long. It's relatively straightforward. Basically, in various forms, people have been asking, this is why I suggested the topic, um, about you know tax avoidance and the link with that with why some people maybe voted to go for Brexit, why they wanted to support it. Now, it can't have escaped anybody's attention that the leaders of the Leave campaign, both before and after the referendum, are extremely wealthy individuals with offshore tax arrangements. Now, some cynical people might think there's some benefit in those being in the UK, but not part of the EU. Now, it's certainly true that the UK is a great place if you're wealthy, but don't really want to pay your way. Uh, we offer a range of tax avoiding strategies, in fact. Aha! I hear you cry. Tax avoidance is perfectly legal. You're thinking of tax evasion. Yes, indeed so. Two different words which indicate on which side of the law you are operating on. But the action is still the same. You are carrying out financial affairs in order to avoid paying tax. It just so happens that Parliament has decided that one of them is illegal and one of them is legal. But why isn't any form of cheating tax legal? Is it because the whole system is so complex that clever accountants are bound to find loopholes and we don't have legal minds clever enough to match them with legislation that would prevent it? I've never believed that we lack legal minds brilliant enough to draft legislation that effectively makes it illegal to carry out a financial transaction such that you will be avoiding paying tax and for no other purpose. Now, the reason tax avoidance exists is because there are a lot of MPs in Parliament and have been, you know, for generations, who wish to have these loopholes for their own wealth and that of their friends, party donors and personal backers, all of whom are very wealthy. After all, when Boris Johnson received £10,000 last week for doing a speech and all he had to do was stand in front of a JCB digger, you know there's plenty of money being thrown around and they'd very much like to keep all of it. And this is the point to bear in mind when MPs are concerned. Some are wealthy in their own right, but they have even wealthier backers who will toss them a fish every time they give them some parliamentary support, whether that fish be a hefty donation to their party, or whether it be some lavish hospitality at some event, or 10 grand for standing in front of a JCB and talking crap for a bit. But tax avoidance is, in my opinion, a massive act of contempt towards Parliament, and more so when it's MPs engaged in it. Parliament dis basically decides how much tax we should all pay, whether we're part of a business or just as an individual. And by not paying this amount, you cannot be described as anything but disrespectful to our legislature. And remember what taxes are. They're the monies due to us to be spent on the improvement of our nation. By avoiding tax, these people are stealing from us. When the government says they had to cut the budget on important services, it's because we didn't have enough because those people were not paying their taxes. When our military are not given the appropriate equipment for engagement, it's because those people are not paying into the pot. It may be legal, but it's legal theft from the nation and shame on Parliament for allowing any of it to occur more than is absolutely necessary. So what has this got to do with Brexit? Well, Although the EU, the UK is pretty corrupt when it comes to allowing people and businesses from avoiding paying their dues, the EU as a whole takes a dim view of it. As such, there is a new EU directive that aims to put an end to it, or at least make it much more difficult to avoid. And it's called the Anti-Tax Avoidance Directive. And the aims are to crack down on the most common tax avoiding schemes. Basically five points. The first of all, it says to make it more difficult to simply shift profits to a low tax country. Two, to prevent double non-taxation of income. That's where you basically produce profits somewhere. Don't pay tax there because you say, I'm, I'm actually going to go over here and pay the tax. And then you don't pay the tax in the second place. Uh, prevent companies by avoiding tax when they relocate assets. Prevent tax avoidance by creating artificial debts. And then there's a general catch-all part of it. Uh, when people pursue other forms of financial, de financial dealings just to avoid paying taxation, what they call aggressive tax avoidance. So a few examples they lay out of current dodgy dealings. So a company invests in another country with low taxation. Those investments generate a profit, which is then transferred to their holdings in the EU country. The EU currently assumes that the tax was paid on those dividends in the third country, but often it isn't. 
So the new rules mean that it's going to be checked. They're going to pay tax in the EU if they have not had the income tax elsewhere. Another example is simply shifting profits to a third country with low taxation. Not anymore. You will now pay tax in the EU if you want to shift the tax profits to another country afterwards. That's okay. But you're going to pay tax for it here. You earned it here. Pay your tax. I suspect we will no longer see people transferring quite so many of those profits offshore. Some will develop a product largely in the EU, but then shift final development to a lower taxation country. Now those companies are going to have to pay tax according to the value of the product's development in the EU. Um, another one, a company sets up a subsidiary company in a third country, and that subsidiary company provides a large loan to the parent company in the EU, which has a high interest pay on it. Now, that basically reduces their EU tax bill because they say, oh no, we're not making much profit because we've got to pay this huge interest on this loan. But the company still makes the money because the subsidiary company gets those interest payments and it's the same company. The new directive can't stop the practice, but it can limit the amount of interest that the company may deduct when dealing with its tax liabilities. So basically, the directive, which was known about a few years ago, came into force at the start of this month, so the 1st of January 2019. So it should now be live. So it's in the interests of big business and wealthy individuals who wish to avoid tax to want the UK to be able to avoid EU rules altogether. I will just add here, I am not for one moment suggesting that all wealthy individuals or large businesses do this. OK, I am quite convinced that a large number are quite happy to pay their dues. I will just put that out there. But bear in mind that simply leaving EU membership, as was campaigned up leading up to the referendum, wouldn't solve their problem. If we remain in the customs union, we might leave our membership of the EU, but if we remain in the customs union and as a result, um, as well as preserving jobs and trade, which the majority of the country will be very happy with, it would still mean that we'd have to enforce EU rules, including the anti-tax avoidance directive. So that doesn't help them avoid that tax. Secondly, they also need the UK government to pursue its own version, of course. But that's no problem. Parliament has for a long time demonstrated that it has enough greedy and indebted MPs to ensure that we would never impose something like that ourselves independently. And if we had to transfer it all across because we're still staying in the EU for a while, I'm quite sure it'd be one of the first things to be abolished. The public spotlight will, of course, never shine on these practices because wealthy media barons don't want any movement on it either. The only time you ever see those schemes mentioned in the news is when they want to embarrass certain public figures who've been caught out doing it, such as the previous Prime Minister David Cameron a few years ago. But I'm sure that although prominent Brexiteers are wealthy individuals with even more wealthy friends and paymasters, just as I said before, not everyone does it. I'm quite sure they don't go in for any of these dodgy dealings. I mean, after all, before the referendum, they all campaigned to remain within the single market. I vote to stay in the single market. I'm in favour of the single market. I want to be part. I want us to be able to trade freely with our European friends. Absolutely nobody is talking about threatening our place in the single market. Yeah, but we... Wouldn't it be terrible if we were like Norway and Switzerland, really? Outstandingly Norway. They're rich. Because only a madman would actually leave the market. They're happy. We have a great independent future, just as countries like Norway and Switzerland enjoy. They're self-governing. I mean, Norway, Switzerland, all of these countries have complete free trade with the EU. And by the way, I can't help noticing that they're doing pretty well. And people say, well, actually, Norway, Iceland and Switzerland do pretty well. The uh, Norwegian option, the EEA option, um, I think that it might be initially attractive for some business people. You know, the Norwegians have no ties in terms of foreign policy with the European Union. They have no ties in terms of their fishing industry, where they have a 200 mile limit. They are opted out and exempted from all the things that really make the British mad. We'll find ourselves part of the European economic area and with a free trade deal. But to repeat, absolutely nobody is talking about threatening our place in the single market. Yeah, but we 
And being in the single market would mean complying with this directive. I mean, if they were just looking after themselves and not the benefit of the country or its people, I mean, they'd be frothing at the mouth to cut all ties with the EU, threatening to bring down the government or split the Conservative Party. But that's not the case, is it? Well, we had a referendum like, on that's this. A fact. We had a referendum on this and we voted to leave the single market. Should I not write to my right honourable friend, the member for Altrincham and Sale West? <laughs> Prime Minister! Now, just to finish with, what I would say is, in my personal view, tax avoidance, as I've already said, is a scourge. Uh, it is something that, whether we're in the EU or out of the EU, I think our Parliament should do something about. I, but I don't trust enough MPs in Parliament to consider it an issue, especially as a lot of the donations and backhanders, and even their own wealth, comes as a result of allowing these tax avoidance schemes to persist. And it has persisted through multiple governments. I'm not blaming one party here. Any party in government that hasn't at least shone a spotlight on it, you know, is allowing it, is actually allowing it. Because our tax receipts are a product of, you know, taxes on businesses as well as individuals' incomes, as well as tariffs when it comes to that. Um, and when you are allowing massive businesses and very wealthy individuals to avoid paying that tax, you are hugely reducing those tax receipts. And that hurts everyone. But anyway, those are my thoughts on it. Let me know what your thoughts are, of course, in the comments below. There will be another poll going up as well, so don't forget to subscribe and click the bell notification so you can be notified of the new polls for the uh, next topics. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to click the like button as well. And until next time, I'll see you later.